Why, hello there, I'm Professor Jill, and welcome to another episode of Planet Scooby Reviews. Today we are covering the episode, A Night of Fright is No Delight, and this originally aired on January 10th, 1970, and it is episode 16 of the first season of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? So we're talking old school Scooby here. And this happens to be my favorite episode of Scooby-Doo. It's just the one I love the most. Uh, I love it because I love haunted mansions, and I like cliffside uh, mansions on an island as well. And I love the design of the villain in this, who is the Phantom Shadow. I just find this episode flawless, from the comedy to the spookiness. And I just love the concept, too, of it, how, of how the gang have to spend one evening in a haunted house in order to inherit a million dollars. I just find that fabulous. I know it's not original to this episode. We saw it earlier with Hanna-Barbera with a season five episode of the Flintstones. And uh, it probably occurred in either literature or cinema or television before this as well. And I'm just not aware of it. Uh, I know it's it was been done later on too with an episode of The Simpsons where they parody this kind of concept of inheriting money by spending an evening in a haunted house. I also want to mention that this episode is going to be a two-parter. Next week won't be the second part of this. Um, but later down the road, probably a month or, or three weeks or so, we're going to do Scooby Natural, which is the Scooby-Doo episode of Supernatural, which pays homage to this episode and features the Supernatural gang interacting with the scooby and pulling elements of this episode out. It was a suggestion by Brandon who asked to compare and contrast the two episodes of uh, Night of Fright of No Delight and Scooby Natural. So thank you, Brandon. I, I think that's a great idea. If anyone else would like to leave an episode request, uh, I'm just doing episodes at this time, not Scooby-Doo movies, as uh, episodes in, in them, of themselves, like a 20-minute episode, takes 10 hours. So a movie would take me 40 hours, which is, is quite a bit of time. Uh, but if you'd like to leave uh, episode request, uh, information is below. Uh, you can either go to plantscooby.com or you can email me at Professor Joel at plantscooby.com or you can go to my Facebook page and I'll leave a, a request there. But enough of my chit chat. Let's get to the review. The episode begins with a spooky mansion sitting on top of an island. As the camera pans to the ocean, we see the gang approaching in a motorboat. Daphne comments that it's a creepy enough place to be reading a will, as Scooby is set to inherit a fortune. Velma and Freddy read a newspaper article explaining Scooby's situation. The article reads, Eccentric millionaire Colonel Beauregard Sanders leaves one million dollars to four relatives and a dog named Scooby-Doo. Apparently Scooby-Doo had rescued old Beauregard from a fish pond several years before and was remembered in his will. Scooby-Doo had rescued old Beauregard from a fish pond and was remembered in his will. Personally, I would love to see that backstory. The gang then land and enter the mansion. There they meet Cause Good Creeps. I am Cause Good Creeps, attorney of the late Colonel Sanders. The attorney of the late Colonel Sanders. It's the only way that you're going to get chicken that is finger licking good. His partner, Mr. Crawls, could not make it in this night. My partner, Mr. Crawls, couldn't make it tonight. Very interesting. So, Mr. Creeps plans to read the will anyway. The will has been pre-recorded on a record player. And as the record plays, we hear Colonel Sanders' voice as he speaks to the four relatives and Scooby-Doo. The Colonel instructs that Cousin Simple, Nephew Norville, Sweet Cousin Maldehyde, Cousin Slicker, and his old friend Scooby-Doo will all get an equal share of the will, providing they spend the whole night in the haunted family mansion. Cousin Slicker? Sweet Cousin Maldehyde? Cousin Simple, Nephew Normal, and my old friend Scooby-Doo. You're all going to receive an equal share of a million dollars providing you spend tonight here in the old family mansion. The house is haunted, and those of you that don't stay, his share of the fortune will go to the others. Those who choose to leave will inherit nothing. After delivering these instructions, Mr. Creeps remarks that he will return to the island in the morning to see which of them will remain if any. 
The clock then strikes 10 and everyone decides to turn in for the evening. Before they go to sleep, Shaggy decides to eat a Shaggy super sandwich. And it's a pretty funny scene where he tries to add fish food as seasoning. And there's this innocent looking fish who growls at Shaggy not to touch his food. Scooby on the other hand decides to take a bath. While in the tub, the phantom shadow peeps in on Scooby and activates a trap door that opens and spills Scooby, minus the tub, out and down a chute. Scooby lands in the basement where he encounters the phantom shadow, a ghoul rattling a chain attached to his arm and laughing hysterically. The ghoul obviously terrifies Scooby and Scooby just zips out of there and runs right through a wall, back up to Freddy, and Freddy points out that he could not have fallen down the chute as the bathtub is bolted to the ground so it could not have tipped him out. Scooby knowing that he saw a ghost is not happy with Freddy's logic. The grandfather clock now strikes midnight and the shadow comes out of it and climbs up the main stairs into Cousin Simple's room. The gang who heard the ghost rattling his chains and laughing investigate Cousin Simple's room where they find a nightcap, along with clue number one, a dusty mirror with a message on it which reads, the first is gone, the rest will go, unless you leave the island in row, 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 phantom shadow. The first is gone, the rest will go, unless you leave the island and row, row, row. Everybody returns to the room and Freddy has a plan. He decides to make a decoy dummy out of Scooby using a melon, some bandages, and a few carrots. Scooby and Shaggy decide to hide outside a window by holding onto a drain pipe. And this is quite dangerous as there's nothing below them but the ocean as they're high up on a cliff. In a room above, the phantom shadow spots the two of them on the pipe and pushes it away from the building. Trying to rescue them, Velma reaches outside and grabs the pipe, but she gets pulled outside onto the pipe as well. With her weight added, the three of them end up swinging downward on the drain pipe and tossed into a secret tunnel at the edge of the island cliffs. Velma comments that they are in a secret passage in the mansion and there they spot clue number two, footprints left by the phantom shadow. And this is kind of strange as shadows physically cannot leave footprints. They follow the footprints to some old Civil War relics that the Colonel had been collecting. There they run into a flying uniform which just turns out to be a duck stuck inside an old Civil War jacket. After running away from the duck, they find a secret elevator and ride it up into Cousin Slicker's room. There they discover that all four relatives are missing and all that remains are their nightcaps. Daphne says, what a night for a fright. Wow, what a night for a fright. And Shaggy responds that all that is missing is some spooky organ music, whereupon they hear an organ start playing. Following the music, they find an organ where they find a music book that has clue number three, a message written on it that reads, feed the organ and watch the floor. Feed the organ and watch the floor. Scooby decides to play the organ and the walls start closing in. Before they are crushed though, the walls stop and Velma figures out that feed means the musical notes F, E, E, and D. She plays the four notes and the floor opens up. Underneath are some secret stairs that lead to a creepy cobweb filled catacomb. There they discover five coffins, one being dog shaped. Even worse, four of the coffins open up revealing the bodies of the four missing relatives. Zoinks, they're opening! The phantom shadow shows up and he's not alone. He has a twin. Scooby ends up fainting and Shaggy is the only one who stays behind to pick up Scooby. Meanwhile, Freddy, Daphne and Velma are long gone and they call Scooby and Shaggy the chickens. Shaggy and Scooby distract one ghost and lead them to an old wine cellar where they fire wine corks at him until they can escape. With Velma, she distracts one of the ghosts by giving him a ringing phone. Shaggy and Scooby also meet up with both ghosts at one point and they end up dancing with the ghosts until they are able to drop the ghosts down the stairs that are by the organ. Meeting back up, Freddy spots some green gunk on Shaggy's hands and he realizes that they found clue number four, green paint. The ghosts have to be fake 
as real ghosts wouldn't leave green paint on whatever it touched. Freddy decides to set a trap and of course it doesn't go perfect, but they end up catching the ghost pretty much in a washing machine. The ghosts turn out to be Mr. Creeps and his partner Mr. Cross, who planned on getting the fortune by scaring everyone off the island. They did end up scaring the four relatives as the bodies in the coffins were just dummies, but they couldn't scare Scooby and the gang away. Mr. Creeps and his partner Mr. Crawls. The police arrest Mr. Creeps and Mr. Crawls and turn the fortune over to Scooby. Unfortunately, the fortune is worthless as it is only Confederate money, which is useless in this day and age. The episode ends with Scooby spotting a floating bone and he chomps on it. Someone replies that the bone is the only haunted thing that Scooby is not afraid of. So I give this episode a 10 out of 10 and that shouldn't be any surprise. Uh, to me, this is just perfect, flawless Scooby-Doo. The ghosts are spooky, creepy, and uh, just super memorable to me. I've always remembered them. And I just love their crazy laughter and the rattling chains they have on them and just the way they chased everyone around. And oh, and the reveal at the end where, where you know, there's not just one ghost, but there's two. That was super fun for me. It was just perfect timing. And we also get some fantastic set pieces that I just love. I love the, the wine cellar and the organ room with the closing walls and the grandfather clock with the secret passage and the creepy, co creepy coffins that open up, and the underground cavern with the, the Confederate memorabilia. It's just perfect. And, oh, I just love how there's even a, a coffin shaped like a dog. Like, that was just <laughs> so funny. Um, and I love the, the naming of the cast. Uh, you got Mr. Creeps, Mr. Crawls, and Sweet Cousin Maldehyde. And I, I'm assuming Maldehyde is a take on the word formaldehyde. And formal formaldehyde is a chemical used in... Uh, embalming people uh it's yeah just just kind of creepy adds extra spookiness to this this episode and it kind of makes her a suspect but my favorite episode of all time in scooby-doo also is uh, scooby taking a bath in this this episode where the the uh the, sh the phantom shadow just leers at scooby while scooby's just doing his thing with his you know scrubbing down his back and and whatnot in this bathtub just so funny but also so spooky and just so scooby-doo if I had one complaint about the episode, and this is minor, and it's not going to take away any points, it's that there is no mystery machine. That's the, the only flaw I can see. And, you know, there are a few chase scenes in this. You know, you get the, the Confederate duck chasing uh, the gang, and you got, uh, you know, the Phantom Shadow t chasing Spook Scooby at the start, and you get the chase scene um, with the wine cellar and Velma passing the phone to the, the Phantom Shadows. But it kind of just... It never feels like it's just trying to chew up time. It's just they're entertaining chase scenes in my books. It just gets it right. Just they're, they're short enough and fun enough for you to like just enjoy and relax and kind of just have fun with this episode. Whenever I want to introduce someone new to the Scooby-Doo universe, which is, which is hard to do, but uh, there's always time and there's always new people who you might not be familiar with Scooby-Doo. I always start with this one. And once again, I want to thank everyone for any likes, subscribes, views, comments, and requests. It, it really helps my channel grow, and I, I, it keeps me motivated, and always puts a smile on my face hearing from everyone who, who comments and whatnot. So until next week, where we will be covering Scared A Lot and Camelot, stay spooky.